Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way. Have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 63rd week. We've got another full house today, not a chair to spare. Sweeney clear the hall, Katie bar the door, Molly put another cup of that great Irish coffee on. We're about ready to go. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. You can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can check out the written show notes, check out all our publications, and uh, uh, even do some searching if you like. We've got a lot of new things coming up here in the next 30 to 60 days, so hope you have fun, and a whole lot of it's free for everybody, so... Uh, that's a treat because every day's a holiday at the Irish Roots Cafe. And just one more note, you remember you can call me and leave a message of any kind or a little bit about your family search that I can play on this uh, broadcast. Might help uh, get you some results if you're truly serious. And you can phone me and leave your message on my recorder at 816-256-3360. And leave whatever you'd like. Try it, you like it. Now let's take a quick little look here among today's topics. Halligan is the family name of the week. Searching for Noble, McLaughlin, Murphy, Kelly, Sweeney, and Breen. Galway Storytellers is the website of the day. Ireland of the Welcomes Magazine, something we all know and love from way back when. Started up in 1952, and it's just been sold. County Down, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History Notes is the book of the day. And lastly, Strange Bally de Hob Coincidences. And uh, here's a reminder, get all three of my free podcasts, not just this series here you're listening to now, but we've also got one on... Uh, Irish song and recitations, giving a lot of history and background to some of the early days of song, uh, particularly uh, in uh, America. And uh, heck, we're open to Canada and Australia and the UK too, so uh, feel free to chime on in. Even some of you folks from Ireland there, you might want to help out. We've got the first uh, 10 just finishing up, and we'll see what what develops after that. Uh, Well, we've got what here? Notes for this week. Well, as you might know, we're finishing up on the transition of our web pages to the new server. Uh, we've got more links coming online each day. And uh, should I say more links are working each day? We transferred the pages over, but there were still a lot of links that had to be fixed. And uh, you know how those gremlins are in computers. It takes a little more work than you think sometimes, but it's starting to come online pretty regular now. Uh I think the last thing I heard, we were uh, completely putting in a new uh, blog set up, so it was a little smoother. So that's all going fine, and uh, be sure if you've joined up as a member to go in and uh, fill out your profile. I'm not doing an official notice on this for another 30 days or so until we get everything just right or as right as possible. But you might as well go in and start up first, and if you encounter any problems, uh, give me an email if you can, and we'll... uh, We'll pass that along. Now, what else do we got? Oh, yeah, the uh, strange Bally de Hob coincidences. Well, now there's a place called Bally de Hob County Cork, and I got uh, just a week or so ago a, a, a notice from them saying they wanted some of my books. We worked out a deal, and I put them in an M bag, sent them over there, and that was, uh, I think that's Jack and Barbara O'Connell from the little town of Bally de Hob County Cork. And you wouldn't think I'd ever meet anybody from Bally de Hob, much less in the same week. But there's our favorite little uh, little luncheon cafeteria uh, corner restaurant type place we go to up in Liberty. And uh, that's called Ginger Sue's. And it's a great little place. And wouldn't you know it, at Ginger Sue's, I started talking to one of our favorite people up there that help us with our uh, our lunch when we go in. And lo and behold, she's from Bally de Hob, County Cork, and she knows the O'Connells who run the bookstore. Now, my whole co- my whole experience with Ireland has been something like that. Just strange coincidences always coming to the forefront. But to meet two people confirmed from Bally de Hob within the same couple of weeks, 
uh, is really sort of mysterious. If you stop and think about it, we're a thousand, 2000 miles away. And, uh, the fact that a small little dinette would have, uh, somebody from Bally de Hob in it. And we'd get an order the same week. We found that out from Bally de Hob. That's just one of those many, many things that happen when you're searching for your Irish ancestors. Be sure to pay attention to them now. Uh, let's move on to some more reality here. The book of the week. Well, let me see. We've got 34 of them just in the Irish families project. I think we'll take, uh, County down Ireland genealogy and family history notes this week. And like we always do, we'll just give you a little sample of what's in the book or, or tell you if that might be a county that you'd be interested in researching. And what do we have for the most common names in the 19th century? Well, right here on the first uh, couple of pages, it gives us Smith, Campbell, Patterson, Martin, Wilson, Graham, Johnston, Murray, Brown, Robinson, Hamilton, Bell, Scott, and Boyd. And of course, a lot of those are names that uh, came over from Scotland. And as you research history, you'll see that there's a whole lot of interchange, particularly between uh, the north of Ireland and Scotland, as you might expect. And it came over at different times. And, of course, that's what our uh, Conquest of Ireland book was all about, the change in land ownership uh, during some of those periods and how it was planned. So that'll be interesting if you got some family from that area of the country. And we've got more coming up later this episode. Uh, one of which is Sean McSherry sets out to set a world record in Africa. So if your name's McSherry or you got some McSherry ancestors, you'll be sure to want to know this. You're uh, your record setters even to this day. Now let's move on to... The member search list. Oh, we, got, we had a bunch of members this week. We'll just take... Uh, Let's take five or six of them. Let me reach down in there and make sure we cover them here. By the way, all you members will be adding some time onto your membership to cover the uh, transition of the web page over. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll end up putting another week or two on there. Uh, number one, new member John Noble of Sudbury, Canada. He's researching his noble ancestors from McGuire's Bridge, County Fermanagh, 1790 to 1825 in particular. And he's looking at John, Ralph, and Alexander Noble. So if you have any information on that, be sure to pass it on and we'll uh, uh, get it back to our member. We'll let John know and let you get, get a hold of each other. Number two, member John McLaughlin of Woolwich Township, New Jersey. And he's looking for John McLaughlin's father, who was also named John. Or where John McLaughlin uh, mentioned below was buried after being mentioned in the 1900 census in Philadelphia, PA. And that John was this John right here. He was born October 1861 in Trimra, Letterkenny Town, Parish of Leck, County Donegal. And he married Grace Doherty, July 10, 1879 in Letterkenny Roman Catholic Church. The parish of Leck. And of course, John's also looking for uh, uh, Mac, uh, Woolrich, New Jersey, too. John, Mal oh, John McLaughlin of Woolrich, New Jersey. That's right. That's the area where he's at right now. So it's a long way from Donegal to Woolrich, isn't it? We hope you luck on this one. Be sure to let us know if anybody can help John. Number three, member Paul Estep of Allen, Texas. He's looking for Daniel Murphy and Mary O'Brien, who were born in Ireland and came to the U.S. between 1800 and 1880. Now, Daniel and Mary were in Missouri in the U.S. 1880 census. Anybody can offer help for uh, Paul? Do let us know. Member Toby Barcelo of Douglas, Georgia. Douglasville, Georgia. Very important here. Oh, Georgia, I'll be heading down to Savannah here uh, what, about the 25th for that uh, big speaking engagement? I'll have that in the blog. Uh, maybe Toby will be able to come there. Let me see. They're looking for Benjamin Sweeney, born in Ireland around 1760. Boy, that's going back a ways. And it's possible that Edmund was the name of his father. The names of Benjamin's sons are Jonathan and Joel. Benjamin was a minister with the Methodist Episcopal Church and he died in Franklin County, Virginia. Number five, new member Sherry Gee of Bristow, Oklahoma. 
Well, that was remembered in a song somewhere along the, the I remember in the rock and roll uh, era. And let me see, Sherry's searching for information on her ancestors, Thomas Kelly and his father, Jim Kelly, and mother, Elizabeth Agnes Murphy. Boy, how would you like to have to research Kelly and Murphy? Uh, that's a fun one. you got to pay attention, real close attention to those first names to help you narrow down the search. She says she thinks they're all from County Galway, and Jim and Elizabeth, about 1865 Galway County, died in Ireland. Uh, Thomas Kelly, 1845 to 1929, died in Montana. Well, Montana should be easier to search because there's not very many people up there compared to some of the uh, denture areas of the country. And she says Jim and Elizabeth uh, and six other children besides Thomas. Uh, Catherine Kelly, born 1842. Con Kelly, Jim Kelly Jr. John Carol Kelly, Sarah M. Kelly Lane born 1856, and Mary Agnes Kelly, born 1864. I'll have more details on that family uh, birth and death dates on the blog, so check that out. Number six, member Patricia Dal Piaz of Harpersville, New York, looking for Patrick Breen of County Clare, and at least three daughters by the name of Ellen, Joanna, and Jane, and Galway County Henry Bentley family, for son John, born about 1847, and also Martin Costello, born about 1850, 1815, and his family, and in County Meath, the Matthew Fisher family. Boy, that's a lot of research. Sounds like you've done a lot already to get this far. Anybody has any help, be sure to pass on the word to me, and I'll get you in touch. And uh, the last note, of course, goes back to Shoal Books, who... Uh, who are located in Ballady Hob County, Cork. It was fate that we connected there somehow. Uh, your order did ship out last week. I'd just like to say hello again and sure enjoyed meeting you. And that reminds me that we owe a big uh, debt of thanks to all of our members because uh, without you, these podcasts wouldn't be possible. And uh, it, it just helps us keep going. It helps us keep the publications going and the podcast and the blog. And we try to be receptive to... Uh, your wants and needs, so be sure to pass them on if you have any ideas. And now we're going to move on to the Irish family name of the week. And that name's going to be Halligan. Today's family history is in honor of member Victoria Halligan, and that's uh, Victoria Lynn Halligan Gabriel, and she's searching for family from the Holmes Patrick Parish, Dublin, Ireland and says that her great five times grandfather lived there and moved to Liverpool, Ireland with his family, never again to, to return to Ireland. Boy, that happened. A lot of people did go to Liverpool, especially for work. I remember an old postcard I had once, and it said, ah, oh, what are you up to, you spalpeen? And they were talking about some, somebody who might have been a migrant laborer or who might work across the country or might have moved to uh, England. Uh, not necessarily a uh, a good term, you might say, but if you're joking with somebody, you could get by with it just fine if you were good friends. Now, let me see. And they moved to Liverpool, and a lot of people settled, settled in Liverpool and remained in Liverpool. And, of course, a lot of people earned a little uh, money for passage to Ireland while they were there and came on over to America from Liverpool, even though uh, originally they might have been from Ireland. And they stayed and worked in Liverpool for a little bit or for a long time and came on over. Uh, now, let me see. We don't have a whole lot on Halligan. That's one of those names where uh, you sure know it's Irish and you see references to it enough, but we haven't published a whole lot on that one yet. Uh, it's It can be spelled, of course, Hallahan or confused with Hallahan or a uh, number of variant spellings are really quite a few. And we find them in variant spelling groups number 791 and 2385. That's from the Master Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. Well, what little we have dug up already uh, tells us that uh, Halla, Hallahan or Hallagan, depending on how you pronounce it, that's spelled with a G-H, is a name that's traditionally given in counties Cork and Waterford. And some confusion may exist between... Uh, different spellings of the Hallahan or Halligan name. 
And you can tell that real quickly by you go back to Patrick Wolf, who whose book uh, Irish Names and Surnames was a real groundbreaking work uh, on Irish families. And he founds in one instance uh, a particular spelling of the name that comes from the Gaelic, you know, that Halligan was an old Ulster family. That would be up north in Ireland. And then he found under another old spelling of the name that the family was an old Cork family from County Cork and also spread into Waterford fairly quickly. Uh, If you go into the uh, 1890 birth index, you're going to see there were 27 births recorded, so it wasn't a uh, rare name by any means. And back at that time, they were mainly in Roscommon, uh, Dublin, Louth, and uh, a couple of other counties. So they're fairly widespread. And if you find them in, uh, if you find them in Dublin, they probably came from somewhere else, which can lengthen your search. Uh, but that's just a guess on my part. You have to check these things out to be sure. You never know how far the line goes back. Um, well, what about the Irish Book of Arms? We take a look in there. Don't find the Halligan name uh, in the Irish Book of Arms, the second edition, which is uh, our documented resource that we published. goes back and gets all those old uh, pedigrees that the, her- the heralds recorded way back when. Uh, don't, don't find it in there, but that's okay because a lot of Irish families never had coats of arms to begin with. Uh, take a little research to understand why, but uh, most of those coats of arms were passed out uh, to families that were helping, uh, uh, shall we say, the government that existed at that time. And uh, a lot of the Irish families had disagreements with that government, so they weren't granted the honor, so to speak. Uh, let me see. Well, if we go to the Free Master Index on the web page, that, of course, is when it's working. <laughs> it should be working pretty well by now, I hope. Uh, what do we find? Well, let's just take the first nine resources and, and uh, see which nine they were, if they help us any now. Birth Index on Ireland, we already mentioned that, that they're in that, so that, that means at least there's record of the family and the spelling. Uh, families of County Dublin has them in there, but the information in there is just the same as in the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, so you don't need both of those, unless you want to look at the individual history uh, of Dublin fam- families that might have been surrounded them and some resources. Uh, County Roscommon Genealogy and Family History Notes has it. Uh, Names of Irish Passengers to America has a Halligan or two in it. Our books on County Mayo, County Armagh, and County Fermanagh, of course, have it. And in the classic work, The Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, we have O. Halligan given on the map of the Four Masters, and they're shown in County Meath at that time. So there's a, just another proof that that family name goes back in Ireland. It has some good history to it. And, uh, of course, our County Meath and West Meath genealogy and family history notes book has uh, the family name in it, too. So lots of little nooks and crannies to peek at. Uh, I'd like to do a major research project on Halligan and put some information in our uh, record. So if you've got it, please do let us know. We'll pass on the information to everybody. Now, what's our website of the week going to be? Well, listen up, all you Galway fans and uh, Irish uh, folklore and story fans. There's a website out here that has some Galway storytellers Uh, linked up to it, so you might want to listen in. And that's at storytellersunlimited.com. And it's a site for the stories and tales of Ireland just being launched with the support of the Galway City Museum. Well, good. That ought to be fun. We'll have a link to that on our uh, webpage on the blog. Well, we're going to be short today because there's just too much to do and not enough time to, to get it in. And I have to even get, start getting ready for uh, going to Savannah, Georgia. I have to figure out what I'm going to say for that talk. Uh, that might take me some long hours. Well, let's move on just to one more thing here. Curious news and notes. What do we have? We'll take three. We don't have time for all 15 of them, but here's the first three. Sean McSherry is preparing to head off to South Africa in training to become the youngest human ever to climb Kilimanjaro. Of course, Mount Kilimanjaro, we've all heard of that, even if we didn't know where it was, but it's in Africa and he's in training, and that shows you the McSherry's come from a 
long line of daring adventurers, young Sean McSherry. Number two, Ireland of the Welcomes, which uh, a lot of us uh, remember going way back. It was one of the lone voices out there for uh, Ireland, uh, Full Color Magazine. And it first started up in 1952, and uh, they really promoted tourism and connected a lot of people with the country and some beautiful shots and some stories and some travel itineraries. Uh, it's really nice. But in 2006, they changed their focus a little bit and started concentrating on uh, articles for younger readers. And it's now owned by Harmonia Limited. And I think uh, it says they're currently listed with 83,000 subscribers. I think in its heyday, it might have had 100,000 subscribers, maybe even 120, but it's been a long time. At one point, I mailed out to everybody on that list, and uh, that was real interesting. It helped uh, boost uh, the book sales that I had just come out with that, uh, my first book, The Complete Book for Tracing Your Irish Ancestors, and I also uh, went over and got some Aaron sweaters and uh, some walking sticks and, and all kinds of knickknacks to see what might uh, sell, and it sure was a lot of fun. Uh, number three, the final one for the day, births in Northern Ireland have been way up the last few years. Uh, 24,500 were born in 2007, and that's up 5% from the previous year, and that marks five straight years where the birth uh, rate has gone up. And what else is happening? Let me see. It says they're also shutting down about 100 post offices in the north. Now, let me see. Scientific reasoning would say what? When you shut down the post offices and your birth rate goes up? Now, it was just one of those little hang hangers I found in the news, which I thought was interesting. They also talked about having some, uh, some mobile post offices where uh, I guess uh, a truck would come along and park and you'd get your mail or post your things on that truck like say on a certain day of the week or time of the day nice interesting concept well like i said the only event i got scheduled yet for april got several coming up in may but april is the april 26th at 7 p.m at the savannah area genealogical society uh, anniversary it's their 25th anniversary dinner and i'll be speaking there for more information contact walt harper uh, i'll have his number and email on the blog and remember to see, send your books, music, or family search to me here at the Irish Roots Cafe by mail or by email. Uh, our American address is the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world on my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 or Skype me at Mick the Bridge. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Yeah.